sounds like I'm coming from another planet. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. We are all preparing ourselves to enter into the festival of Jamashtami. And I think we all came here from far and near to see how we can mm, work more closer or come more closer in our relationship with Krishna. Coming to a temple at such a festival time always uh, brings us closer to, to Krishna. And I think we all hope this secretly, that during this festival I really hope that my Krishna consciousness will deepen, that everything will become more, let me say, more real for me even. So uh, today, two days before Jamashtami, I thought that we would have a little uh, discussion on coming closer to Krishna. It was interesting, a few days ago I was preaching to a very, very nice and intelligent young man who is becoming deeply interested in uh, Krishna consciousness, both in regards to the philosophy as well as uh, in relationship to the practice. And he told me that he wanted to go uh, this year to Brindavan um, during the Kartik time. And uh, he asked me a question. Is there anything which I can do on my side to prepare myself more um, if I want to uh, meet Krishna or come closer to Krishna and closer to an understanding of Krishna in Vrindavan? Is there anything I can do on my side which, uh, which I can, can do? And uh, I gave him a, a written answer because sometimes one forgets when one hears something. I sat down and as I was writing down my recommendations, my suggestions, what this uh, person could do to come closer to Krishna in Vrindavan, I was remembering uh, all of you uh, who, are, who have gone, maybe not as far as Brindavan, mm, this is in Germany, and, uh, but I know also some of you have taken airplanes to come from Russia and so on. It was a long journey, almost as long as from Moscow to Brindavan. Mm. But in general, for most of us, it was a shorter journey. So although this is maybe not Brindavan in Uttar Pradesh, it still is a holy place which is dedicated to the worship of Radha Madan Mohan exclusively. And in a way, uh, this is a place of pilgrimage, a place where one can come closer to Krishna. The idea of a pilgrimage is, uh, it's called in Sanskrit, a tirtha, and uh, it comes from the Sanskrit root three, or to cross over, to go beyond. So when we visit a temple like Goloka Vrindavan, which is a holy place in the West, a tirtha, this idea this principal idea of a crossing, of going beyond, of going further, 
is, uh, is there also for us. So in a way, we are uh, pilgrims. Those of us who have come, come here are on the way to, to cross over the material impasse, the narrowness of their lives, and see something more genuine, something more deeper, something which is close to Krishna, if not seeing, uh, coming closer to Krishna himself. So, uh, I sometimes think this motto of seeing our coming to Goloka Dham for Jamashtami um, is not uh, so much in the forefront of our mind, that we are pilgrims who want to cross beyond the uh, ordinary life and we want to come closer to Krishna. Therefore I thought to, in my first session here to speak about what one can actually do on his side to come closer to Krishna by visiting a holy place. So, so I will talk about this and if you wish you, mm, I suggest you we will also ma make one exercise in the end. Uh, exercise is not maybe the word, but we will we will do something to come closer to Krishna consciously. So I thought we would start now. Mm. Hare Krishna, Sestanu. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. I. I now need these things also, so I don't, I'm not always sure. <laughs> Good, so let us star, start. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Hare Rama, Hare 
कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे So, Hare Krishna. As far as I'm concerned, we can 
thing uh, much more, but I thought to, to keep within the boundaries of the time which we have assigned to this program, I, I better stop here. Otherwise, <laughs> four hours, no problem. <laughs> I got a new cup from Russia. <laughs> this is full size. <laughs> so, my dear devotees, I want to once again uh, greet you uh, for this uh, wonderful upcoming celebration. When you study the spiritual culture of Krishna Consciousness, there are only three things which stand out. Uh, the, the proper time or the holy time, like appearance days, festival days. The proper place or a holy place. And uh, a good inner mood, a good bhava, we say, a good Krishna conscious mood. These three, when they can come together, they can create a spiritual uh, miracle, an experience, uh, a deep, uh, let us say, breaking through uh, of our conditioned life. Um, we certainly have a very holy time, the time of Lord Krishna's uh, appearance. As far as Germany is concerned, this is the most sacred pilgrimage place which is dedicated to Radha and Krishna. We have another very sacred place, Singhachalam, which is dedicated uh, to um, Lord Nishingadev. And there we, will, there, there we find a very nice festival taking place every year at Nishinga Chaturdasi. So we have the right time for Krishna Bhakti. We have the right place for Krishna Bhakti to appear. Uh, Golokadam. Uh, what we may still require is the proper Krishna conscious mood in which the experience can take place. Uh, uh, that uh, I would like to help you all, help myself as well, <laughs> to establish in this first uh, 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 session. First of all, I want to speak about attending Jamashtami. My dear devotees, uh, things take on a different light when it comes in contact with nectar. Somewhere in our scriptures is an analogy when there is an ocean of nectar, anything which falls in, let us say, a handkerchief, a piece of cloth, uh, uh, Anything becomes nectarian in contact with the, ta uh, with the uh, uh, let us say, the ocean of nectar. Even if a dry stick falls into uh, the ocean of nectar, after some time it will absorb the uh, nectar and become a nectarian stick. <laughs> Everything uh, in contact with a strong, strong spiritual e event becomes blessed. And on Jamashtami, everyone and everything gets blessed in our life. Just by being at the proper time there and uh, being at the holy uh, place. Of course, our mood is very important. Consider this wonderful Russian cup here. If I will, if I want it to become full with water, let us say rainwater, 
I must make sure that it stands in this position. If it is in the other position, <laughs> I can't do this now because it's full of water, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, no matter how much rain uh, falls down, uh, the rain will not be collected, it will not be contained. So, yes, the same holds true when we visit a holy place at a holy time. Uh, 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 we have to stand in the right position. We have to open our hearts uh, through uh, devotional service, through bhakti, so that uh, the whole impact of the nectar can be felt. However, there is a difference in my analogy. The pot or the cup which is standing uh, in the wrong way in the rain, topsy-turvy, you know, has, uh, does not collect any rainwater at all. But even an animal, like a deer, um, or little, we have these little bears in in Germany, they are also here in this forest. They are very, very happy bears. They are not uh, attacking anyone. They are afraid uh, more of you than you are afraid of them. Um, uh, uh, even a little bear or an insect, which is on Jamashtami in uh, the temple or near the temple of Radha Madan Mohan, will be like that. Uh, handkerchief, this uh, unconscious entity, uh, it will come in contact and there will be great benefit. So everything is auspicious. You have uh, uh, made the right decision. You have uh, uh, approached an ocean of nectar at the proper time and now uh, somehow the nectar uh, will will work on you. I was thinking about this in relationship to Krishna's uh, appearance festival pastime. You know, the, one can look at it from different perspectives on the appearance festival uh, and one will see different things you look at one perspective, uh, which is my own perspective, which I like to take. Krishna was born in Tornanda and Yashoda in Brindavan. Mm. But if you take it, let us take another perspective. Uh, 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 it's not actually another perspective, but let us look at uh, uh, what happened in Mathura. Uh, at, at this time. I think you have all, you all remember that uh, the highly uh, mi minded uh, soul Vasudev uh, <coughs> uh, uh, was marrying a Devaki, a great, great soul. And uh, Kamsa, who was known all over Mathura as a very cruel person uh, had uh, uh, decided to put his cruelty away on that day. Um, he was related to Devaki and uh, the way one th describes these relationships in Indian terms, he was the brother. So he decided, let me take Devaki from the house of her father to Vasudev's house. In India, this is a very dramatic event when the uh, girl who is to be married leaves the house of her father. Then, the, you know, all the the father cries, the the people who are in that house cries because now our mm, dear, uh, uh, mm, let us say, daughter or sister or relative will leave the house and go to the house of someone else. So, to help uh, Devaki to not feel so distressed, and the bride also cries, <laughs> uh, 
uh, Kamsa decided, let me uh, have a close uh, relative help m my sister. I will uh, drive the chariot uh, and I will uh, personally deliver her in the hands of her, uh, uh, you know, I will bring her to the house of her uh, husband. So as he was riding along in, in jolly good mood, you would say in English, um, it was a most festive day. Everyone was in their best dresses. It was the marriage of the uh, town. Uh, everyone was on the street. There were musicians. There was just a happy mood. In the midst of all of this, a voice comes from the sky, an Akashwani, and says, Kamsa, you fool! Imagine the scene, you know, the whole town is out, it's all, you know, it's all like this decoration, flowers, flowers, and happiness everywhere. Uh, Kamsa, you fool, you do not know that you are driving your death. The eighth son of your sister, Devaki, will kill you. This was a prophetic voice, my dear devotees. It didn't come from any, any loudspeaker or any, 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 let us say, ignorant man was saying this. This was an Akashwani, a Devata, an all-knowing Devata had pronounced this prophecy. And Kamsa immediately understood the reality of of it. He stopped the chariot, gone was his happiness, gone was his uh, nice and emphatic uh, uh, action. He only saw it's either my sister or it's me. Um, uh, better I kill my sister uh, and this way there will be no son and I will not be killed. So he took out his sword. Imagine, Devaki is dressed for marriage, not for her death. He takes out her, his sword, sharp sword, and uh, grabs his own sister by her braid, black hair. He must have destroyed all the marriage decoration and uh, then is ready to behead her in a bloody spectacle of utmost violence, right there on the street, right before the celebrating people of the town. Um, Vasudev is shocked. He jumps up uh, he, and he falls, comes into a his arm. He said, no, think a little bit. No danger will come from my wife. It's the son, and it's not even the firstborn, not the secondborn, not the third, fourth, five, six, seven. It's the eighth child. Kamsa is furious. He's fuming. He has this Vasudev on his arm there is his uh, sister and somewhere there is the prophecy and he is uh, 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 bewildered uh, maybe also shocked because he, is, he has been stopped in, in his rage for a moment and Vasudev says if you are afraid of this child, Kamsa, I promise that any child which is born in our family, Devaki and mine, I will bring the child as a newborn to you and you can na, do what you please with the child. So, you know, in our civilization, we don't always know 
the value any longer of a word. What is a word? I know America has a often quoted president now, uh, and it is known. He says one thing, and he never does it, what he says. Never. It's a principle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 um, a word has no uh, m meaning. Uh, Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances, and then the next moment that a super humble person will do something uh, not very humble, uh, you know. Uh, words don't mean the same <laughs> as it was done as, as they meant in other times. Kamsa knew Vasudev had given a word that was enough. Vasudev would prefer to die than to not keep his word. He was known like this. And he said, Dika. <laughs> of course, there was a gloomy atmosphere now in Mathura. I do not know if the musicians played the same after that. I do not know if uh, there was really a festive atmosphere picking up again. But uh, what I know is that when the first child was born, Vasudev, with great, great sadness in his heart, with the greatest misery which a father can feel whose child is helplessly lying in his arm, looking at him with utmost confidence, Vasudev took that little child and brought the child to Kamsa. Kamsa sees this little child. On the day of the marriage, he was making a plan, I will kill all the children as they are brought to me, uh, so that there is no chance that there was a, maybe a miscalculation in the Akashwani, um, that it's maybe the f second born or the first born or the third born. I will, but now Vasudev is standing before him, such an honest man, such a truthful man, and he gives him the child for Kamsa's <coughs> whimsical action. Kamsa could kill him, but Kamsa says, It's a child, and it's the firstborn. There is no problem. And he says, You may take the child. I'm not afraid of this child. I'm not concerned with this child. Take her. Now, all this is watched by Narada Muni. And here comes something which I never could understand until a few days ago. Narada, who is Krishna's energy of bhakti, the bhakti shakti. Well, some say it's Radharani, but you know, it's very, 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 very big bhakta. Uh, Narada, uh, the mental son of Lord Brahma, says, I am not satisfied with the developments. So mm, Prabhupada writes about what happens then. He uh, uh, came from the heavenly planets to the forest of Mathura. He alighted, you know, he came. He's a mystical saint, you know. He did not use uh, any vimana, uh, that is aircraft. He traveled on his own through the sky, and he just came down at the forest of Mathura, and uh, he sent a messenger to Kim Kamusa. When uh, the messenger arrived in Kamsa's court, he informed him, Do you know who has come? 
right from Swaga, who says comes up? Narada Moni has come and he wants to see you. Oh, said that comes up, feel very honored, such a great saint. And he left his pallet and uh, came out to receive Narada. It is said Narada was as bright as the sun, as powerful as fire, and free from all sin. So comes up seeing such a personality. Just imagine Narada Muni would come here in the forest of Goloka Dam, you know, send a messenger to all of us. The messenger would come, come and say, stop, stop Sachinanda Swami. No, I'm not going to stop. I'm right here in the fire of Jamashmi. And you don't understand, Narada Muni has come. What? <laughs> we all would stop everything. We would run out of the window. At least Nimai would run out of the window. Uh, and many of us would follow him. No, as fast as possible. Uh, and we would see this personality surrounded with an aura of light. We would feel his power. There, when you have fire, nothing can stand in the way of fire. Therefore, Narada Muni was as powerful as the fire. There, there was, and he looked absolutely pure and free from <coughs> sin. Uh, so Kamsa said, come, come in my palace. And he, he gave him a golden seed, which was also bright, you know, it was illuminated, uh, illuminating. And uh, mm, mm, then Narada Muni said, uh, Kamsa, I'm thinking you make a mistake here. Uh, please explain. You absolutely do not understand the dangerous situation in which you are. Otherwise, how could you have behaved so lenient with Vasudev's firstborn child? Oh, it's about that. This comes up. What are the news, Narada? Well, says Narada Muni, one of my friends is King Indra. So, I was visiting him and uh, there was a meeting on a mountain where all the devatas came together. There was a summit, a conference of all the powerful rulers of the universe. Was it about me? said Kamsa. Oh, said Narada Muni, you still have the milk of your mother in your mouth. You are this ignorant. <laughs> of course it was about you. They were all talking that they would take their birth on planet Earth and together uh, under the lead uh, uh, together let me get this right here uh, I shall tell you Narada Muni says confidentially that the meeting was held just to plan to kill the Asuras headed by you You have a younger sister named Devaki, haven't you? <laughs> no, 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 there was a prophecy on her marriage day, said Kamsa. Yes, and it is a fact that her eighth son will kill you. Now do the right thing. Narada Muni took the, his veena and played very nicely.
And then he left through the wind, through the air, through the air, I wanted to say. So I thought when I first became aware of this, this is coming from Hari Vangsa and Prabhupada is, is quoting this. I first thought, Narasha Muni, everything was going very non-violent. <laughs> Kamsa was getting some good sense and he was not killing the children. Now you who are supposed to be the greatest saint put this thorn into Kamsa's delicate mentality and Kamsa of course turns around 180 <coughs> degree and uh, uh, displays his a ferocious activity. But then, the day before yesterday, I read this amazing, amazing text by Prabhupada, which I want to share with you, because it will show you how Krishna's appearance is good for everyone, even the demons. Just like when anything comes in contact with an um, ocean of nectar, that also becomes nectarian. So, can I read this to you? Yes. Why? <laughs> no one can blame Naradaji for encouraging Kamsa to kill the sons of Devaki. The Saint Narata is always a well-wisher for human society and he wanted the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna to descend to this world as soon as possible so that the society of demigods would be pleased and would see Kamsa and his friends killed by Krishna. He wanted to, to accelerate, to make things go in a faster pace, to, to even accelerate the demoniac atmosphere so that Krishna would really come and put a counterpoint to, to all of this, contrapoint. No? Mm, Kamsa, would, now listen to this, uh, he would, wanted to see Kamsa and his friends killed by Krishna. Kamsa would also attain salvation from his nefarious activities and this too would very much please the demigods and their followers. <coughs> Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur remarks in this connection that Narada Muni sometimes did things that were beneficial to the demigods and the demons simultaneously simultaneously at the same time. I'm reading this, my dear devotees, to make one point which you know already, but then to make a second point which you may struggle with in your spiritual life. The first point is it's auspicious for everyone when Krishna comes and when someone comes in contact with Krishna, even if he is not at all qualified. I mean, I think no one of us is, <laughs> I mean, not I think, I know, we have no, no Kamsa-like people here, that is clear, but we have uh, all some tendencies in our heart which still keep us from surrendering to Krishna. So that will be taken care of today, no? in a good way. The second point, which is maybe even more, uh, let us say, outstanding, is the way Krishna chooses to bestow his mercy on an individual is not always obvious to this individual. 
Like the way he appeared, the way he Narada Muni starts to talk, where where a person like me goes, why, please, why Narada Ji? Uh, Krishna makes plans, which are not always super clear in the beginning. It becomes clear in the end if you can stay up till the end. I would like to offer a, a story which I heard from Giriraj Maharaj uh, I, the first time, but, but I have told it already, so some of you might know it. There was once a farmer, uh, after uh, a long time, he had a son whom he uh, helped to grow up, and the son became strong and sturdy. This farmer also was not so rich, had one horse. So one day the horse uh, ran out of the barn into the forest and all the neighbors said, oh, how, how much we pity you, how bad for you, your only horse has left you. The farmer says, it's not good, it's not bad, let's see. So after a few times, the way I heard it from Giriraj Maharaj is, the horse came back with another horse, a second horse, which was uh, even stronger than the horse. And they had made friendship and the horse came back with his new friend and the farmer just needed to to close the door after the two horses, and he had two horses. The neighbor said, brilliant, excellent, this is very good. The farmer said, it's not good, it's not bad, let's see. Uh, then, uh, the horse was, the second horse was so good, but it was still wild. So in English you say one needed to break the horse. What this language means, it's a rodeo language of Texas. Uh, it, it means if you have a very strong-willed, temperamental horse, you can't ride on it. So you need to break the uh, temperament. Uh, it sounds cruel, I know. Uh, and then the horse is very tamed and very mm, presentable to the society. Uh, so uh, the son, who knew the art, uh, was uh, getting on the uh, new horse and trying to, you know, to use it, uh, to, to make it used, get it used to the reins and to the signals and commands of a rider. But in the process, the horse became so unwilling that it behaved very wild and it threw the only son uh, from uh, its back. Uh, and the son landed so bad that he broke both of his legs. Oh, said the neighbors, how bad. The farmer said, it's not good, it's not bad, let's see. <laughs> I think you have learned the answer by now, no? <laughs> so, uh, then there was war. And the king's men went to all the farms and everywhere else also to recruit new uh, people for the war. And they also recruited wanted to recruit the farmer's son. But when they saw that the legs, they had never grown back into shape. It was like an O shape, you know, like, uh, like a cowboy. They also, cowboys from too much riding have also O shaped legs, sometimes. The people of the king said, oh, he is not, not qualified for war. Um, we don't take him. <laughs> war, going to war means the great risk of being killed is there. Uh, 
So the farmer, so the neighbors came again to the farmer and said, "How good! They didn't take your boy." And do you know the chant? <laughs> it's not good. It's not bad. Let's see. Yes, it's not a very spiritual chant. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, but it shows a little bit how a devotee is not uh, so much impressed by the dualities of material existence, but he tries to see the hand of Krishna within everything. I like to tell this story because things are happening to us also. Some we call good, some we call bad. But who knows what the ultimate mover, the great mover, the one who is behind everything, Krishna, the supreme controller, has in mind uh, when he arranges a certain situation. So often we lament and we say this is very bad. So often we smile like little children when who got a bonbon. Oh, how good, how good, how good. Uh, but uh, very rarely do we ask, what is the plan behind all this? What is the higher plan behind it? Let us see what is Krishna's uh, desire. Krishna sometimes chooses to give his mercy in a way which is called bitter mercy in Vrindavan, neem mercy, no? like the neem, leaves of the neem tree. But in all cases, whatever happens, especially at a holy place and uh, then when there is a holy time, the, we should see what is Krishna's idea, uh, plan behind it. We should be willing to accept that and come to peace in our mind. Yes, become relieved. Yes, become content with the understanding that Krishna is the ultimate mover, uh, the uh, supreme Ishvara in my life. And whatever happens in my life is under the control and guidance of Krishna. And Krishna never wants bad for anyone. I like this so so much and the way this uh, pastime accelerates uh, accelerated you know um, Narada Muni accelerating everything and Kamsa who had uh, who, uh, changing his mind again you know when he after the visit of Narada Muni he went and really killed the firstborn and every other child who was born subsequently. He, uh, in fact, even went so, yeah, he became very cruel. The, let this suffice, let it be enough. And ultimately, even that served a higher purpose. Mm, and uh, Narada Muni, who was connected with the higher purpose, purpose, who was a servant of that higher purpose of Krishna, he did his part in, in this. And so my main my points here are, once again, Jamashtami is all auspicious for everyone. It is also, and but the way Krishna will choose to give his mercy, uh, you will have to be a little bit uh, inward turning. You will maybe have to pray in order to understand. And then you will leave this place in a, a very, very nice way. There's a prayer uh, by King Prito. It comes in the fourth canto, who has deeply thought about this subject. And he says, I don't know what is best. Now, as a father who knows uh, as a father who is not wa uh, not waiting for the son's demand, does everything for the benefit of the son, 
please bestow upon me whatever you think best for me. I like this very much. You know, a little child will say to his father, you know everything, father, and you know what is best for me. So please do whatever is best for me. The father, seeing the surrendered mood of the child, will make an extra effort to uh, benefit his uh, dependent little uh, son or daughter. No? So in the same way, Krishna uh, can be approached by his devotees in this material world. You are like a father who knows what is best for the son and who does not have to wait for the demand of the son. In the same way, please, you do whatever is best for me, uh, whatever you think is good. Once you arrive at this place, my dear devotees, your life is very, very sweet and very happy in whatever it is that happens to you. You may have to overcome that hesitancy in your heart to surrender to Krishna. You may have to think, I, to, to address this, I have trusted a thousand times and I was cheated and then cheated again. Um, with Krishna, it's different. If you place your hand, uh, your life into Krishna's hands, this is the miracles happen. When I was bringing one devotee to the airport, I met a few other devotees on the airport. And this airport, these devotees were uh, traveling from Kirtan event to Kirtan event because they were invited. They're very good Kirtan singers. Because I'm telling something which is private, I will not relate their names here. So uh, we were in a hurry. I was also going to a Kirtan event and I was, was saying, my dear devotees, I w wish that we all stop now for a moment our various different thoughts and just think about one thing. We have somehow decided to serve the Holy Name and look what the Holy Name does with us. He guides us and, and has given us a wonderful uh, life and brings us from one event to the next where we can serve the devotees. Uh, Never think yourself to be the mover and the controller. It is Krishna who is moving and controlling you. Uh, the, uh, and then I asked, where would we be without Krishna having, having taken us up? And then the devotees talk, gave their answers. I will not repeat them. Uh, let's say not in the positions in which they are now <laughs> not nearly <laughs> yes uh, so so fine so this let me say this coming to trust krishna and his arrangements that is a journey which all of us should do as a pilgrim how we should think, can I become a more trusting devotee, a more faithful devotee, a more surrendered devotee? How can I address and overcome my own obstacles, my own hesitancy, which I still have to surrender to Krishna? Uh, mm, I want to return to the beginning of my little lecture. Uh, you remember there was this uh, very nice person who asked me for tips how he could go uh, and make the best out of the pilgrimage. <coughs> and when I wrote down these tips I was thinking of uh, this evening lecture today and I had all of you including and all of, all of me also. <laughs> In mind, I'm, I'm also a pilgrim. I wrote down, it's very important 
that a real pilgrim uh, starts on a journey where only the compass of the soul can direct him. What is the compass of the soul? Well, like a normal compass uh, points always to the north, the soul's desire will always point towards Krishna. You must know that the, every human being in his has deep inside an energy, an inner calling. Sege Jung called it an Elan Vital, mm, uh, which, which calls him, come on, you must realize yourself and you must realize Krishna. Every human being has this, this inner compass, the compass of the soul, which always points in the direction of you must lead your authentic life, you must be yourself. And the compass needle also goes, and you must connect with, with, with the Lord. No? This, is, this is, we are born with this compass of the soul. So a pilgrim uh, will follow the compass uh, will follow the direction uh, of the so, uh, of this, and therefore his his journey is always a spiritual journey. It is not touristic at all. It's not uh, social. Uh, he wants to lead a life where he is more in connection with his spiritual identity. Do you know that Krishna consciousness in its deepest meaning could be described as a change of identity? No, we are not the body and all that. We are a soul, a, a, a soul, a servant of Radha, a servant of Krishna. Huh? And a, a spiritual list, a pilgrim, will always try to act on, on this. Like, you have come here. You should understand, I am a servant of Krishna. I don't yet know exactly who I am. Uh, this is a problem. When, 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 when the self is lost, all is lost. Yes, that's our, our situation at the moment. Huh? Mm. Well, it's not so big the problem, because we are on a ripe path, at least. We are on a path of devotional service, but mm, yes. So when you are in a holy place like this, at a holy time like this, try it as your first rule, be in contact with that spiritual platform. That is, you must always make a contact to the spiritual center of the place. What is the spiritual center of Golokadam? Anyone knows? Who? Radha Madan Mohan. No, you. I would be the greatest uh, <laughs> offender if I would ever think like this. It is the spiritual center is the Lord. Uh, mm, um, and you must also see that you stay in contact, like when you go to bed, go to bed with a prayer to Radha Madan Mohan. When you wake up, make it a point to visit Radha Madan Mohan. Uh, you know, be aware that at this holy place, Krishna is in the center and make your life turn around him. There are many opportunities at the festivals. There are darshans, there are kirtans, there are lectures. Everything so well suited so that you can uh, turn to the spiritual center, to, to the center of your life. Uh, then, uh, during the whole stay, stay in contact with Radha Madan Mohan. This contact ideally should never 
ever uh, stop. Mm, I remember I once made a... Uh, I usually am during the month of Kartik in Brindavan, but one day, no, one time, Burijan Prabhu and myself uh, decided to go to Jagannath Puri and uh, observe our Kartik Vrata in Jagannath Puri. And it became very clear to us that here Lord Jagannath and uh, also Tota Gopinath were the center. And if we wanted to stay spiritually connected here, we should every day be in contact. So what we did is we ate every day Mahaprasad of Lord Jagannath and we visited Tota Gopinath. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, mm. Mm. Then, my dear devotees, take part in the spiritual programs which keep you your head over the water or which uh, keep you spiritually connected. Yes, we will meet many devotees. Yes, we will meet also devotees whom we have never met uh, the whole year. And yes, we will open our hearts to them and discuss with them. This is also very nice to have Sadhu Sangha. Uh, but in all of this, let us not forget that we are here uh, to celebrate one birthday child. <laughs> Yes, he is a birthday child on Jamashtami, uh, Lord Krishna. Let us understand more about him. Uh, and you will see, uh, the last recommendation is uh, throw your concepts overboard. <laughs> I want to challenge you. What if the reality is beyond your thoughts? Ooh. What if you don't need to take your mind so serious? Ooh. Heavy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, as you enter the celebration of Jamashtami and you open yourself up by standing in the right position, like this beautiful Russian cup. Mm -hmm. It actually has a Japanese uh, cup. <laughs> uh, if you stand in the right position, open to Krishna, huh, open, uh, I'm sure your life will get new impulses, new inspirations, new directions, and this will be the best uh, Jamashtami ever for you. Uh, also, uh, during such beautiful festivals, we have again and again seen that uh, Krishna is very kind to his devotees. So I would like to now do something. If you, we can all turn towards the deities, please. Um, somehow I think you may need to rearrange your sitting and uh, we will do something. Maybe better hide. Krishna, Krishna. I know some of you are here with the mobile telephones. I don't know, maybe you should... Uh, I don't know, you, you are uh, camera people, you know better where to turn your cameras. Mm. All right, we still wait a little bit for you. Is it, what is it? Eh?